Oh, hello. I am Jenna, and this is Jen and Tonic. If you are a cocktail drinking nerd like me, hit that subscribe button and join me for a drink. You may have noticed there's slightly different surroundings today, and that is because I have a new toy to play with, and uh, my baby apartment will most definitely turn the uh, smoke alarms on. So the parents were kind enough to let us come over and take over their kitchen for a little while. And as a reward, I'm gonna make them some drinks. To start out with, I'm going to make an old fashioned, and I'm gonna spice it up for you today by using rum instead of whiskey. And the reason that the name Old Fashioned came about was uh, after people were drinking uh, the, the traditional drink, which I just mentioned, they started to, bartenders started to experiment with different, different add-ons, different spirits to go into that. And people started not wanting that. They wanted the Old Fashioned drink. So they'd go into a bar and they would say, give me the Old Fashioned. And I use my homemade orange bitters here. And uh, I've started spraying this in my drink, so Take my glass here. Bitters ready to go. So other than bitters, there's two ingredients. Your sugar or syrup, and I'm gonna use this barrel-aged syrup that I got from uh, St. Augustine Distillery when I was visiting there last out of Florida. A bar spoonful of that, and then two ounces of my rum. Last step is to add my ice, stir it, and strain it into my glass. For garnish, I'm gonna use a cherry and my orange peel. I'm thinking I taste this now, and then I taste it again after I smoke it. What do you think? So right now, it smells like delicious fresh orange. And it tastes about how you would expect an old fashioned to taste. So here's how you use this thing. It comes with a couple different tools if you buy this one. Uh, it's got this little tube that uh, you attach to whatever you're choosing to use to smoke it with. I like this because you can just set it directly on top of whatever your cocktail is. So what you're supposed to do is turn it to the number two, load it with your chips, light it, and once you get some flame on your chips, take it up to number one. The zero in the middle is off. So for this one, I've got a couple different ones here. I thought I would try the cherry with this one. So I'm gonna give it a try now that I've given it a smoke with the cherry chips. The, sm the smell does change. It starts to smell like wood. If I were to say, is it cherry or hickory or peach? I don't know if I would be able to tell you that. And taste, it is there. It's not, um, I don't feel like it's a huge amount of smoke, but it definitely changes the flavor a little bit where you can taste that, so. Old fashioned. Cocktail number two, Black Manhattan. So as many of you probably already know, the Manhattan is my absolute favorite and I love adding Amaro in place of the vermouth on my Manhattans. For this one, I am going to be doing the very traditional Black Manhattan recipe, which was created in 2005 at Bourbon and Branch, which is a bar in San Francisco. And that called for Averna, which is an Italian um, Amaro out of Sicily. And uh, the reason that they use this one is because it actually makes it like almost a black color when you're finished with the drink, which you'll see when I make it. So I'm gonna be using that. And then the original recipe calls for rye. I'm gonna be using the good stuff. Cool story about this place. Templeton, Iowa was a town, a uh, very small town, railway, railroad town. 
during <laughs> railroad railway I don't know so this was a this was a town at the turn of the century uh, that was really small and during prohibition they weren't doing well and so they started creating this whiskey and the whole town got into bootlegging it to help each other out and they wouldn't call it whiskey they called it the good stuff and that was their code word for it so I'm gonna be using these for my drink today fun fact about Manhattan's for you this drink uh, is said to have been created because of Jenny Jerome, which if you don't know, that's Winston Churchill's mother. This story is obviously not true, but it's kind of a cool story. So Jenny Jerome is supposed to be in New York and she's supposed to be hosting a banquet at the Manhattan Club. And uh, so she asked them to create a drink for her, which becomes known as the Manhattan. The problem with this story is that at the time she was pregnant with Winston Churchill, the future Prime Minister of England, in England. Still a good story, right? So the original recipe calls for uh, orange bitters and Angostura. I'm just gonna use my homemade orange bitters. And then two ounces of your rye. And one ounce of Averna Amaro. You can already see from the glass uh, why it's called a black Manhattan. Add the ice and stir. Anytime that you do a spirit forward cocktail, you don't want to shake it because the goal for this is just to chill it down. Taste is lovely. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things to consume. Um, the way that the Averna changes it from a normal Manhattan is it makes it have a little bit more of a herbaceous taste. Okay, here I go. So for this one, I'm gonna use the hickory chips. All right, this didn't work as well as the other glass because the coupe is so wide, but kind of got smoke everywhere. It definitely smells like smoke. I don't know if that's because there's smoke everywhere or if it's because of the drink, but it smells great. You do taste it. It's weird because it tastes a little less sweet than it tasted before. So drink number three. Negroni. It gets its name from Count Negroni, who was very fond of Americanos. And this was Campari, vermouth, and soda water. And I guess he was drinking at Cafe Cassini, one of his favorite hangouts in Florence, Italy, and said, why don't you make it stronger by replacing the soda with gin? And that is how we got the Negroni. Or that's the most popular story. So that's what we're gonna go with today. So a Negroni cocktail is equal parts of your gin, vermouth, and your Campari. So I've got one ounce of barrel-aged gin, one ounce of my Puna Mess, which in this case is my sweet vermouth, and then one ounce of my Brut Americano. So my glassware for this one. Traditionally, you would serve a Negroni out of a rocks glass. However, my girl Yurt gave me the most adorable bathtub gin glass, so I'm gonna be using that for my Negroni today. For garnish, you would traditionally use an orange rind. I'm gonna use my dehydrated citrus that I made a couple weeks ago. So this is delicious. I love the bitterness that you get from the Brut Americano and it's borderline a Boulevardier in taste because of the barrel aged gin and a Boulevardier would be where you take whiskey and put it in the drink instead of gin. Time to smoke. I'm gonna use peach wood chips. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. There's nothing peach about this, but this is what I'm doing. This one definitely tastes the most smoked out of all of them. And I'm going to assume that's because I put this bulb over it and let it hang out on it. So lesson learned, if you want extra smoke flavor, let it sit with the lid on it. If you don't, then you can just put the little top on it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it smells wonderful. Again, I don't know if I necessarily am picking up peach versus hickory versus whatever. Maybe once I become a connoisseur of wood, I'll be able to discern the difference. 
<laughs> I love what it's done to this drink though. It's almost made it uh, a little bit more rich and definitely more complex. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. I am Jenna and this is Gen and Tonic. Cheers. <laughs>